This is the grave of Robin Hood, who died in 1247. And there's a big debate, you know, is it real or not? I believe, like King Arthur, Robin Hood was a real historic figure, but I think a lot of the legends about him were really overstated, and it kind of grew to be like a folklore tale. But anyway, it's not like, there's no parking lot near here, and I'll show you how to get to it. It's not that hard if you know where to park and what to do. The inscription itself is more recent, but it reads, Here underneath this little stone lies Robert Earl of Huntingdon, never an archer as he was so good, and people called him Robin Hood. Such outlaws as he and his men will England never see again. He died on the 24th of December, 1247. And if you take a look, you can see his original gravestone. And on the right day, you can see it kind of looks a bit like a sword. Well, to start with, you're going to want to begin by parking at the Premier Inn, Huddersfield North. And then you walk right across this road whenever you get the chance to the opposite side. You walk down the road for, I don't know, maybe about a quarter mile hugging this wall here. And then you just got to find a spot to hop the fence and go up into Kirkley's Priory Park Estate and walk up until you find a little grove of trees and I'll show you what that looks like. Continuing down the road from the Premier Inn, you've got a little river that crosses the road right there. And there's a spot here on the wall that's easy to just hop right over. And this whole area is overgrown, but it's a part of the old forest that Robin Hood used to haunt. Sorry if I'm uh, a little bit out of breath. I need to do more cardio, but that's the road where we started. And if you continue in a straight line, you'll find this old pathway. And you just continue along the direction facing away from the hotel. until you see this beautiful little outcropping of rocks right there. And if I remember right, you kind of got to go just on the opposite side of this outcropping. And there's a little bit of a grove of broadleaf trees, evergreens like that. And right beyond that grove is Robin Hood's grave. I think I'll just film the last little bit actually going up to the grave site, but again, this is the rock outcropping, and this part actually looks like a bit of an old room. Maybe it would have been a part of the priory back before it was destroyed, and the only part that remains of the original priory is the gate. pretty well. I think it's kind of funny the local town council insists on never turning this into a tourist attraction. The local community has been asking them for years, for decades, to help them market it. But they never do. I guess they're practicing their ritual sacrifice for the greater good. <laughs> but now they're suggesting they take this site and bulldoze it and build a little bit of a parking lot over it, completely restructure the site. But yeah, you can I can see it right now. I don't know if it shows up on the camera, but right through the woods here. The legend says that as he was dying in Kirkley's Priory, he shot that arrow and it landed where the stone is now. The Priory was destroyed at some point in history, but now it is part of the Kirkley's Priory Park Estate. And I'm going to show you the field where the Priory used to be. If I have enough time, I may even go to the old gatehouse of the Priory, but that's kind of just 
up in the air right now. I got a bunch of other sites I'd like to see today. But it's a beautiful time of year to come here in the fall when all the colors are changing. Stop number two on my Robin Hood road trip. I really hope that my SD card holds out here because my camera's doing that thing where it's saying no SD card every now and then, but this is towards the grave of Little John, and I'm gonna tell a little bit more about him when I see the church. But we've just now entered Peak District National Park, and wow, there is a beautiful view. And little John is buried near here, and it's said that he was one of the oldest members of Robin Hood's gang. He was one of the first guys who joined us. And it's fall, so there's a bunch of beautiful ferns and hills and moors right up to my left. This is the town of Heathersgate for the grave of Little John. And uh, I'm going to narrate here in town because the church up on the hill to my right right now where he's buried it has a ongoing funeral so i'll show the grave there but i don't want to narrate while a funeral is going on obviously so i'm going to make that trip there kind of quick but little john was said to be one of robin hood's most faithful followers a lot of stories have him being the only person present at his funeral and the only person present for his death and the only person who really tried to stage a rescue of him. now these areas of the country were almost mythical because on the hills up surrounding it Difficult to see from the town, but it's a very desolate place. It's rocky, it's got a lot of moors, and it makes me think that the Victorians must have seen it as a very mysterious place. You've got all of these stones that look almost like altars, and you can imagine the Victorian people thinking, oh, there must have at some point been druids up there. And as I reach uh, towards it, as I research it, I see that there is a Bronze Age stone circle up there. And I see that there has been a lot of talk about, you know, the, the mythology of it, and there's a Romano-British settlement. And uh, in town here you have the sign, Little John's Grave. And it's said that he was uh, buried in the Naylor family's plot underneath a yew tree. So a lot of stories have him as Little John the Naylor. And it's interesting because the story has him battling. Just like a lot of King Arthur's knights, they battled Robin Hood. Little John battled him as he was crossing a bridge. And in most versions of this story, they have Little John winning the battle. And uh, Robin Hood sort of says, well, you won. And Little John, rather than kind of taking the victory, says, all right, I finally met a worthy opponent. I'll join you. So it's an interesting story. And he went on to be one of the most loyal, cunning, and faithful followers of Robin Hood. And he's supposedly buried in this village right up that hill there.
And I should specify at the grave site in the church of Little John that he earned his moniker at this battle over the bridge. When he defeated Robin Hood and earned his mutual respect, he gained the moniker because he was at least seven feet tall, probably taller. And he may have been related to the Naylor family. That's why some people have him as Little John or John the Naylor. And he's buried here. But there are some legends that say he went to Ireland and was hanged in Dublin.